Hi, welcome back to Kendraj Economics Club. Today we have an amazing guest with us, Jia Moluni, professor at Ahmedabad University. She was a student of Kendraj, and she is here to share with her, share with us some wonderful memories she had at Yale with Kendraj and her journey through feminist economics. Welcome, professor. Thank you, professor. Uh, we. Um, we wel welcome to you you here after seeing one of your beautiful blog posts for, about kane raj um can you begin by sharing some memories you had with professor raj while you were a cds doing a mpl right i uh, thank you very much for inviting me to this forum and i'm quite uh, happy to see that young people are interested in professor kane raj and his work um, because you know the field of economics has changed quite a bit since his time um i did my mphil under professor uh, under the supervision of professor kane raj uh, so i have a lot of memories but i think before the mphil uh, the memory that i really cherish is um finding professor kane raj uh, browsing through uh, volumes of census and other data sources in the basement of the center for development studies trivandrum library and that was a place that uh, i used to visit and i enjoy browsing through data and it continues to be one of the big themes on which i work uh, both in terms of my economics my empirical uh, thing you know i'm really what people would call an empiricist you use a lot of data and uh, uh, you know uh, also in policy making i have been working on uh, improving statistics on informal sector and other things with the policy uh, with the statistical departments of countries and even with the ilo so that uh, is my cherished memory of just simply seeing him standing there and doing this in the late afternoon in in cds since it's let me tell you it's pretty hot down there as well in those days though it was not really air conditioned you know we they had the lorry baker construction where air was supposed to flow through yeah so, yeah. <laughs> yeah i think that's one of my cherished memories yes oh that's wonderful um and um, do you think uh it like you briefly mentioned about your academic trajectory was also influenced by it but like how much how, how much was it influenced uh, like influencing your uh, journey i mean you have wonderful experience in, in your academic pursuits also so like uh like how exactly how exactly was it influencing your as like uh, your ideas your thoughts right. uh, are, actually is it, it more of more... the methodology part yeah so he actually basically he instilled confidence in me uh um, because as uh, i have written in my blog post you know most of us as students we were afraid of him actually because he was so straight and uh, he he would be so direct that was really difficult and his intellectual uh, level was at something that was very difficult for us for me to really fully uh, appreciate or understand but he instilled that confidence uh, in me while i was doing math and first of all was by after throwing so many ideas at me a uh, for an mphil dissertation uh, i chose a very simple idea of changing cropping pattern in uh, in in kerala and he appreciated it a lot and he took it up immediately and in fact he then introduced me uh, to the data sources of cost of cultivation data which used to be there on the kaliyapattam campus uh, they had the agroeconomic research center uh, so first and foremost he instilled confidence in me on that then he instilled confidence in me by telling me that you know i'm pretty capable of doing my own editing so he edited one chapter and he said okay now you edit the rest so i was really disturbed by that because i thought uh, you know he meant something else but then i got down i sat down and i did that in the other way he instilled confidence in me was actually accepting that handwritten dissertation in one shot except for making editorial uh, thing which, which amazed me because of course i had been discussing my chapter scheme and uh what i was planning to do with him but i hadn't really shown him so much of output uh that uh, you know suddenly he gets this thing and then he okay is it within two three days and this is really really amazing so that i think is one of the big things that he uh influenced me with and then of course uh, cds as a whole not just him the other professors professor vaidyanathan professor panikar was there uh professor gulati was there uh i mean ashok desai was there 
Uh, so they instill this idea in us that you have to first worry about what is your research question. And that is something that I find many of the young scholars uh, really uh, are at sea before they start their, start their research. So uh, whatever you went back to him or to Professor Vaidyanathan later in my career, uh, and I would tell him, okay, I'm doing this and I'm doing that, and uh, these are the data sources I'm using, and both of them would be, okay, so what's your research question? So, you know, that is a way to focus, to focus your thoughts, to focus your ideas, and then you work around that and see whether, what is the theory around, uh, uh, about that? What is the empirical data which is available? What is the new thing that you can do? So research question was one of the thing. And of course, love for data. I mean, he really instilled that. And that has been the main theme around which my, uh, all my uh, research work has been, you know, I keep searching for new data sources uh, and then analyze them so that any particular issue that I might be looking at. So last one that we did was on women entrepreneurship. The new one we are doing is on digital platform economy. So I look for different data sources that you can look at the same issue, the same questions using different empirical uh, sources and see whether you, you basically triangulation is one of the things that you do. So then you get an idea of whatever is that topic. So I think these are some of the things that were instilled in us uh, by Professor Raj, but also by the other professors there who were uh, equally influential. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I have heard that Professor Raj always wanted to build a big, big, good team. Like in, in, while he was at uh, Delhi University, also I think he was doing yes. the same thing by hiring Ch Chakradish Bhagavadi, like Amartya Sen and people like that came into Absolutely. the Delhi University under, uh, under his time. Yeah, and also like uh, yeah, it was quite interesting to know that uh, your, your dissertation was like uh, accepted very quickly because of, we were told by other professors like when I was meeting Professor Kunyam and he was telling telling me he was uh, it was the toughest master like uh, Professor Raj was the toughest master he was trained under. So yeah, it's quite uh, it's quite interesting to know know, know that and uh, yes. yeah, I mean about data. I mean uh, we today are using Python, scraping the websites. Uh, economies are going <laughs> crazy with uh, uh, finding new sources of data. And you telling that you went to the statistical department's office and was physically copying the data is another another like uh, <laughs> level of how things were originating. And yeah, it's a uh, it's, it's a quite a uh, quite a journey for uh, us to know about where things started and yeah where things are. I mean, right now we are using GPT on mm -hmm. Python and like um uh, like integrating chat, chat GPT and Python to maximize the efficiency of scraping yes. huge data. So it's like a, it's a different level at this point of time in terms of data and yeah, it's it's it's, it's a it's, it's a quite a quite a journey. Um, I yeah. was also like fascinated about like knowing which particular work by Kane Raj up uh, like a particular paper or a, um like an article. Uh, which influenced you the most? Like uh, you found it very fascinating, uh, or you you found it is very seminal. Uh, is there anything like that you, you would like to share? Sure. See, most of the people who talk about uh, Prince Kane Raj talk about his work on agriculture, commercialization of agriculture, and all. But the paper that I found that I used later for a thing was a paper which he had written in the Economic and Political Weekly in 1972. It was called. Uh, the politics and economics of intermediate regimes. And uh, here he follows uh, Michael uh, Kelitsky, actually, who in 1972 had come up with this idea of uh, middle classes, uh, that the middle classes are formed by uh, middle peasantry uh, and uh, uh, and the, they become a, a middle, they become a force. Uh, which rises to power when uh, political independence happens without um, uh, armed struggle. This was the kind of idea that he had put forward. And this idea of middle uh, classes uh, or intermediate classes is the term that Proskane Raj gave to them, uh, was developed by Proskane Raj in this paper of 1973. It's in, the, it's in their Economic Political Weekly. And then uh, he defined uh, these middle classes as... Uh, uh, or what he called intermediate classes, as normally you're looking at them as uh, mostly you define it in terms of property, right? Uh, having property and working class and uh, 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 capitalist kind of thing. But here he talks about all those who had income from property, which is a general thing, but also earned income from their own labor. So intellectual labor, which includes people like us who earn from our intellectual labor were also included in his this intermediate caste. Uh, classes. And then, of course, uh, Barbara Harris took that forward and she called it intermediate classes, where she looks at 
uh, different types of caste groups which are uh, aligning together and coming. Uh, a lot of her work is of that kind. And then she talks about the self-employed as being a particular kind of class. And that's a interest uh, uh, for me for a very long time. Small enterprises, uh, self-employed people, how do they manage? How do they grow? Uh, so I took this idea and then I actually wrote a paper which was called uh, Contours of Conflict and Coalition, Rise of the Intermediate Classes and Caste. And this got published. It was for a JNU conference. And it was published in a volume called Contested Transformation, Changing Economics and Identities in Contemporary India, um, which was edited by Mary John, uh, Praveen Jha and uh, Jodka, Surinder Jodka. So there again, I took up this uh, idea of the intermediate classes uh, to understand uh, who are the social constituents of this. And we argued that, or rather I argued that there is a new coalition happening of these intermediate classes, which constitute of um, the lower, uh, the upper segment of the lower caste and the up, uh, lower segment of the upper caste. Uh, and they come together. Uh, at, actually, it was looking at the political scenarios which were changing around 2002 uh, and after. So looking at that scenario, we saw how which caste groups were coming together, caste and religious groups, actually, and uh, how they were uh, being, in some sense, uh, a lot of them were self-employed, a lot of them were the OBC people, and they were rising. And then in some sense, they were, you know, uh, being suppressed. Uh, so I thought this whole idea of intermediate classes was very interesting. And uh, that's how I wrote that paper, which is very different from what uh, he normally talks about. But uh, that, I think, is the thing that influenced me. I, I am hooked. Uh, I, I really want to read your paper now. So, like, we will definitely <laughs> give that in our description. Um, like, uh, please do share the links with us, and we'll attach that in the description for our viewers also to uh, yeah, sure. find all those papers. Uh, like to see through all, how, how those thoughts evolved over time from Cambridge to you. So that would be that would be quite interesting to explore, I guess. And yeah, yeah sure. Indian reality of caste uh, over class is a very very interesting, very important yeah. thing to know. And like as yeah, as many of the political parties ignored ca caste for a long time, mm -hmm. and that was a major problem in India. Um, mm -hmm. um, also, like I think we had had like a lot of questions regarding Professor Raj, but you yourself had a quite fascinating academic journey, and um, it would be quite inspirational for a lot of econ young economists in Kerala to know about your journey. Um, I would like to begin with asking you about your journey at Yale, like uh, you were doing your postdoc there. Uh, what was it and like um I was you, uh -huh. you were also working there um so I, I would like to know about your research there uh, how you reached there um yeah. also like how, how all this training before before going there helped you survive in such a like a competitive settings that's true so first let me say that i'm a fully homegrown i love to say that in the sense that i did my phd in india i did my phd in gujarat with professor praveen misaria who was a a uh, very famous uh, so economist demographer. He also used to be the uh, head of the governing council of the National Sample Survey Organization. So my interest in data was fully and completely uh, sort of uh, taken uh, over with this NSS data, which he insisted that one should learn about. And so then I, in those days, I became an expert on NSS data because hardly anybody used it with the intensity with which I used to use it. But then I also, not for my PhD thesis, but for uh, afterwards when I did a very large project on non-agricultural employment in Gujarat, uh, we collected uh, uh, data on uh, from you know villages, uh, households, uh, looking at the growth of non-agricultural employment at that time. That was a big theme. It became very, very popular. I have a few articles on that in the Economic and Political Weekly as well. Uh, so uh, I uh, applied to... Uh, so in those days, you know, like, again, this is the, uh, we were living in a pre-digital uh, world. So we were living in a world which didn't have computers, laptops, software, uh, or anything of that kind. And all the analysis was done almost by hand. Though, of course, this, in this case, we did use SPSS data. Um, anyway, so uh, I, uh, and in those days, there were hardly anything called postdocs. And somehow I got this brilliant idea in my head that, no, now I also need to find out the environment in a foreign university. And so I should apply. And so then I had already finished my PhD and I was already working. So I thought, OK, it's a postdoc that I can apply. So there was we didn't have email. So <laughs> you won't believe it. So 
I actually wrote to about 30 universities, three zeros, physical letters, uh, asking whether there's a postdoctoral uh, fellowship and whether I know this is the kind of work that I do and this is the kind of data that I have. And, this, and I got responses from quite a lot of them. It said they didn't have any such. There was exactly one university which wrote back to me saying that they had a postdoc uh, fellowship for two years and they were calling it household economics. And it was under Professor Paul Schulz. That was really something under that is, this is the son of Theodor Schulz and uh, one of the fathers of this household economics. So I applied there and you won't believe it. I actually got that fellowship for two years at Yale University, the only place which said it had a postdoc. So I went there and uh, the, it was a cultural shock uh, because uh, you people, when you are here, you know, you had all this TV and uh, social media and all telling you what life is over there. We had none whatsoever. I'd never seen a credit card in my life. Um, I'd never seen this kind of shopping malls and things like that. And I had also not seen, um, you, you know, uh, so I worked under Professor Paul Schultz. And we had not used, even when I used SPSS data in India on this data, it was all done by a computer programmer uh, because we would get a lot of help, research assistants, computer programmers and whatever. I was an assistant professor here. But when I went there, uh, we got this computer and a uh, fancy room next to Professor T.N. Srinivasan was my room and I had a lot of conversations with him as well. And then we, the program that they were using was SAS. And SAS is a programmable program. And it's not, a, you know, it's not like this SPSS and all that, which is a, a software uh, with all the, you know, commands and things like that. You have to actually write it. And uh, we, I, I had no clue, actually. But then uh, we learned that thing. So it was the learn in those two years was like unbelievable. There was one uh, <laughs> computer programmer there, but he was like, he didn't intend to help anybody. Uh, but yeah, he used to help me a little bit. And then we just took the help of other postdocs and other PhD students who were there to learn this program. And uh, actually, I did all my analysis on that. And there were like two papers, I think, there in the Indian Economic Review on uh, multi multiple jobs and uh, women's work of some kind. I can't remember. Married women's work or something. Um, so... Yeah, so it was a learning experience. And Professor Schulz was a very uh, different human being. The culture was very, very different from what it is in India. In India, like the professors are all over, like, how are you? How's your husband? How's your daughter? And there's Professor Schulz who will only talk about work. He just ignores anything else which is around you. And he only talks about work. And he was pretty scary, actually. And then I had to do modeling. I had to learn how to do this uh, household economic models. I had to learn how to do SAS. And so the learning experience was just, just tremendous. That's how I got to Yale. And then, yeah, and then, of course, we never intended to live abroad. So we came back uh, to India after our stint. I did work at uh, the Institute of ISS Social Studies at Hague for a while. But then, yeah, we really came back to India. Oh, okay, uh, that so that was a personal choice of coming back to India. Like, uh, like although you got trained for her, like abroad, so you had a better skill set to come come back and work in India. So yeah, that's yes, very interesting. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, and a rare choice, I guess. Uh, during those days, I mean, we have a lot of prominent economists who who, who yeah, took right. U.S. citizenship and settled there. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, oh, we, we were, were very we clear. Were like, we were very clear. We were going to live in India. We we're going to work in India. As my husband yeah. says, we have to prove that uh, we uh, live and work in India and we're the best. And uh, we have, we, we, we definitely attached the uh, blog post link where you describe this ex whole experience in detail on your description again. Uh, sure, but sure. Um, I, I would just move on to the next question regarding your interest in feminist economics. Um, I would like yeah. to know like uh, how it developed, what contributions um, do you think are more critical in that field today? Um, also, we have this. Uh, yeah, uh, please, please, please go ahead. Then. So when I was at uh, CDS, I got this uh, uh, exceptional uh, offer from uh, an older professor, uh, an outside professor, Professor Sharada Mani. You might not have heard of her. So she was doing some work on collecting data on women. And then she was also working with uh, Devaki Jain. Uh, who is uh, known as uh, the mother of feminist uh, economics in India and time use uh, data and so on. 
and uh, they uh, sort of asked me whether i would help them with uh, the sampling of the, uh, the sampling design that they wanted to work on and they were collecting uh, data in kerala from um, uh, agricultural households and women so that is where i first saw what women's work looks like and then i started to look at and read about uh, women's work and in those days time news studies was just you know the idea was there it was not there actually um, so from there i started to get uh, interested in women's work and women's work has been a theme with me throughout almost always gender would be a variable that i would use and i would try as far as possible to be able to see what would be the difference between men and women in whatever kind of employment education or what a uh, kind of value of output or whatever that i could get in entrepreneurship and so on so uh, that is where i got this idea about women's work and then i read a lot i happened to be there when a very large seminar was held i can't remember the name of the seminar where a lot of feminist economists which included professor devki jain and many other uh renowned uh, women of that time i think uh, professor geeta sen uh, many of them and i was you know that mphil student in cds uh, so we uh, the advantage in cds is that you can hang around a lot of these people listen to them talk to them uh, because they all eat in the same canteen so we get a, a lot of uh, time to interact with them and that's when i found this uh, the whole idea of women's work that's where my entry into feminist economics went and then when i chose when i had to choose my topic for uh, phd i chose uh, women's work in agriculture uh, so women's work in indian agriculture was the topic of my phd thesis uh, so there i got the chance to read it at that time when i was doing this i didn't know that it was feminist economics or anything of that kind <laughs> i was just you know strolling into something the terminology found, is well yeah the terminology is so not well, uh, out there Yeah. Correct. It was not so well developed. Uh, the idea of feminist economics yeah. it had started, but it was not so uh, well developed. So I was doing this work, and then I uh, later on I came to know that uh, you know there is this thing called feminist economics. Now, feminist economics is actually more of a method. Uh, it's it's yeah. the way you do uh, research. It is the kind of questions that you ask. Uh, it is the topic that you choose. The theme. and the method in the sense that feminist e- economics actually encourages that you use kind of mixed methods so that you don't just use uh, this kind of modeling techniques uh, but you actually use qualitative data uh, and um, you also um, the idea is of course you use uh, mixed methods but also you critique uh, existing uh, uh, theory and uh, so there's a lot of critique of neoclassical economics one of the big thing that uh, feminist economics was able to question was this whole thing about care work and a lot of feminist economics is with regard to uh, care work which uh, i don't really uh, work on um, but yeah, it I, introduced I, this question yes yeah and at yeah, reading, right? reading economics we 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 give a lot of info, in, in importance to care work and those kind of things and like uh, and also like we emphasize on a um, lot of lot of we have lot of economists and economists working on the feminist economic school of thoughts and like i like to try to point out um on the uh, importance of care work and the aspects like that and like that you rightly pointed out the importance of uh, qualitative data like especially i work i try to work on the lgbtq issues in india and i know that there are a lot of data um void in the qualitative mm-hmm. uh, like in the quantitative um scenario like there is we don't have any data on many issues which we try to address mm-hmm. so, mm-hmm. yeah this this these points are really really important uh, i guess uh, and even 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 even, uh, even today we have to address uh, all these situations unfortunately um right. i i i I'm sorry to interrupt I, i would like to move on to the next question if that's okay for you um uh, and our, our next question is about again in the similar settings uh, but about uh, Uh, the uh, cis heteronormative uh, dominance in the economics mm-hmm. academia like um, there is there, there is um, there is a male dominance in the economics academia in india like uh, we need to address that and there is an invisibility like there is a recent paper which came uh, uh, about uh, women being invisible i also think that lgbtq individuals are invisible like we have few examples like pula prabalishan who came out openly but like we have rare, rare, very rare very eco- rare economists who are coming out as um, in the lgbtq space or like uh, uh, we we do have a lot of powerful young uh, women economists like you but um still the numbers are pretty low and also like uh, in organization 
institutional settings in institutional settings we have a uh, lack of wom- women uh, representation in the economics academy how do you see this yeah so you know your question with regard to lgbtq and all that it's actually the same as being a woman <laughs> in the sense that as much visibility and uh, not or lack of visibility that the woman gets at the struggle that a uh, fem- female economist or female anything uh, gets is uh, now i mean equivalent to what the other uh, less marginalized the marginalized communities are getting you know the marginalized communities which includes caste wise or if you take if you want to take a brief show of lgbtq it's all the same in the sense that the same amount of you know uh, like you're saying the male dominance where they actually look through you <laughs> as though you didn't exist in fact there are a lot of younger and even older uh, senior people even working in my university they come and they ask me how did you manage and how did you survive in this place i mean in this kind of a, a, a scenario how did you survive uh, well actually at that time and we never thought about it so like when i first went to conferences i would think that rare woman so even i'm very active in the labor economic society here and at that time there were like four or five women so one of the reasons why i sometimes think i became very of course i did i've done a lot of work and i've written like a uh, unbelievable amount of work but uh, so also a reason why people recognize you because you're that one you know person hanging around there in a sari uh, and you're so visible uh so they really uh, there are very very few women in uh, were very few but it that is not true now now if you go into a conference particularly the kind of themes that i work on more than half the population there are women and lgbtq and everything all types of uh, uh, activities are there people are there um, groups are there and so on it's there but the thing is the question of what you the question that you asked the question of power are they there in the policy in the policy making are they there in the management are they there like for example again uh, i became the director of the institute of rural management and the uh, professor dr varghese purian institute purely by chance i had never thought in terms of being the director of any institution or any place at all i just wanted to do my research but it was uh, uh, dr amrita patel who was the head of the uh, national dairy development corporation and the successor to uh, varghese kurian dr varghese kurian who insisted that i should apply for that job as a director and i kept asking her why and then she gave me a whole lot of reasons why and that is why i applied so you know even to think of having a woman as the head of an institution is such a rarity and if it wasn't for dr amrita patel i would never have taken that job i would never have applied would not have thought about it so even if you apply the chances are uh, are are remote though of course now a lot of emphasis is being given to gender so uh, uh, that consideration is there now but not in my time not in my time gender was not such a big issue uh, even now the university will say why why do we need representation i mean you know not the faculty is a non faculty who asked this question you know that uh, uh, why do we need women's representation the sort of thing so yeah that's a struggle so that same struggle that you feel uh, that the women have faced in all these uh, this time and uh, now all the other new uh, groups and communities which are coming out will have the same trouble and it's just it's not that it's gone away it's there today it's there even now and uh, if you continue like that for some time but the important thing is to be able to voice uh, to place i mean to um, make your representation to voice to organize and not be afraid to voice your thoughts or your views on anything that's a very difficult proposition particularly when you're younger now i was always a very outspoken person and i would speak up with without fear of consequence that is not <laughs> true for everybody right everybody has to yeah. maybe most people have to fear consequences so the consequence is what the thing is you have to be on top in your academics Uh, you yeah. have to be known you have to write you have to be acknowledged for your writing you have to be on top once you are on top in your uh, uh, sphere sphere of activity in my case it's academics it's much harder for people to uh, you know curb your voice they can curb yeah. from not oh. giving you uh, administrative positions or management positions but they cannot curb your voice 
So uh, yeah, it's, yeah. It, your voice is not just your voice. It's something that comes with your stature and that stature comes from your work. And whatever your work may be, in my case, it's academics. So that thing has to be, you know, you just don't try, you don't try to get that position or that thing simply because you're a woman, simply because you're, you need yeah. a representation from different communities. It's not how it works. How it works is that you have to have that work on the ground. And that's one hell of a hard work that has to be done. Yeah. And uh, and also yeah yeah that, that's that's the, that's the thing I guess uh, excellence is the one one word which can outgrow all the kinds of uh, barriers mm. which uh, others try to create create around you I guess so um, yeah, it, it's it's also like the only only oh, way out yeah. from uh, all these constraints and also like seeing the world like outside the well like the well which the uh, we are trapped in it's to see outside and uh, mm -hmm. explore what is happening elsewhere um, and in seeking opportunities elsewhere like you did uh, going places um, so. Um. Uh. Yeah. And I also like the comment you made about Sari. And I. I. I was. I was in Washington D.C. like interacting with Derrida Mislavsky, one of the trans economists. Um. And she was telling me, and she wanted to come come to India and wear Sari. Uh, so like I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> there are more more people coming to India to wear Sari in a conference. I mean, whatever they want to wear. But yeah. So. Um. I was. Uh. Yeah. We hope uh, that uh, like that these things change and like. Uh, we 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 are definitely are outspoken people. We stand up for ourselves and we speak out, and that's what K and Raj Economics Club also represents. We try to speak for the um the caste group caste groups which are historically marginalized. Uh, the the um we do have organizations like Bahujan Bahujan Economists who do the same, and we nice. like to promote their work as well. Um, and finally, uh, finally, ma'am, we have this question about uh uh, uh like a, like a, like a, an advice you would like to give to um. Uh, Malayali economists, young Malayali girls um, who want to aspire, uh, who's aspiring to become an economist, or like, uh, I would like to, uh, I would like very much if you would answer that question in Malayalam for us, um, and like uh, to give a uh, like an, I don't know, it's I, I don't know, um, just to just to uh, give uh, give a motivation to them. Sure. Um, Malayalam samsari kiliya. Uh, you know, we have the joke, and the uh, husband is uh, Hindi speaking. Now, he doesn't speak Malayalam. Uh, so it goes like this that, uh, you know, normal uh, conversation, we will Hindi la samsari kya. In the kya kya khana banana hai, ya kya jana hai, that kind of thing with Hindi la. Economics is a uh, Vishyam, uh, he's also economist. Economist to Vishyam Samsari Gyanagi, then we speak in English. So there's no Malayalam there. Uh, and the Malayalam, I, I sort of have to uh, keep it updated by speaking to relatives. And then, you know, a lot of uh, people in the university systems are also from Kerala. Our day I've wrote is Malayalam Samsari Zetan, and Malayalam is a little bit okay. And then economics, the one is Adam of the Inki Malayalam Samsari Kambatilia. But uh, to be an economist uh, and a woman economist, uh, first and foremost, why can I? Economics, why can I? And I have novels when I was doing my. That also was a learning experience huh? uh, when I was uh, undergraduate, uh, postgraduate. Uh, I was in a PhD in a PhD. I was novels so I can stop it. Nyan only economics books, economics journals, economics articles. I think I did that. Just read along with a PhD and then uh, assistant professor I other Asametu. Nyan novels um angante. Asametu ne arthe social media no arthe saadhan endai thiliya. So we were not wasting time on social media. Uh, so we were, uh, you know, reading and I would read economics. So read is the first thing. Other Ilyanda you can't do anything. Reading you know, that topic, that theme, uh, which interests you, it has to come from inside. Uh, interest in whether, you know, something that you're concerned about. Uh, we find it. Uh, then it is easier to uh, develop along that. Other kind of island, the theories are laying, the data are laying, the number of, uh, what kind of uh, projects in apply GM, uh, other no key, then, but you should have that thought in your head and other why it's it matra kutuna. And then once our theme decided the karya, then there are various ways to look, you know, you look for uh, more, more readings, uh, also uh, data. 
ഇത് പോലത്തെ ഡേറ്റ ആണ് സെക്കൻഡറി ഡേറ്റ ഇസ് വെരി 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 ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് വാട്ട് ആർ ദ സോഴ്സസ് ഓഫ് സെക്കൻഡറി ഡേറ്റ ഗവൺമെന്റ് ഡേറ്റ ഓർ യു നോ നൗ ഡേസ് സി എം ഐ ഡേറ്റ ഉണ്ട് കുറെ ഡേറ്റ ഉണ്ട് ഇപ്പോൾ ഏത് വിഷയം എടുത്താലും ഡേറ്റ ഉണ്ട് ബാങ്കിങ് ഇതാണെങ്കിൽ പിന്നെ ആർ ബി ഐ ഡേറ്റ ഉണ്ട് ക്ലെയിംസ് ഡേറ്റ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞൊരു സാധനം ഉണ്ട് ദെൻ ഇന്റർനാഷണൽ ഡേറ്റ സോഴ്സസ് ലൈക്ക് ഓഫ്കോഴ്സ് ഇഫ് യു വോണ്ട് ടു വർക്ക് ഓൺ ഫെമിനിസ് തിങ്സ് ലൈക്ക് ഞാൻ ഈ വിമൻ ആൻസ്പ്രണർഷിപ്പ് വർക്ക് ചെയ്യാൻ തുടങ്ങിയപ്പോൾ വിമൻ ആൻസ്പ്രണർഷിപ്പ് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ ഈ എൻ്റർപ്രൈസ് ഡേറ്റ കാണും പക്ഷെ അതിൽ ഓണർ മാൻ ആണോ വുമൺ ആണോ എന്നുള്ള ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ഉണ്ടാവില്ല അപ്പൊ പിന്നെ യു കാൻ ആ ഡേറ്റ യൂസ് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റില്ല സോ ദെൻ അങ്ങനെ ഫൈൻഡ് ചെയ്യണം വോട്ട് ഇസ് യുവർ ടോപ്പിക് ആ ടോപ്പിക്കിന്റെ മുന്നിൽ ഡേറ്റ ഉണ്ടോ ഇല്ലേ ദെൻ ഓഫ് കോഴ്സ് കലക്ഷൻ ഓഫ് ഡേറ്റ ആൻഡ് സോ ഓൺ സോ റീഡിംഗ് എന്താ അതർ തിങ് ദു ഹാവ് ടു റീഡ് അതർ ദൻ ഇക്കണോമിക്സ് ബുക്സ് ഇസ് ന്യൂസ് പേപ്പേഴ്സ് അതുകൊണ്ട് ജനറലി ഈ വേൾഡിൽ എന്താ ഉണ്ടാവണേ ഈ കൺട്രിയിൽ എന്താ ഉണ്ടാവണേ ന്യൂസ് പേപ്പേഴ്സ് ആൻഡ് ഇപ്പൊ കുറെ ഓൺലൈൻ സോഴ്സസ് ഉണ്ട് യുനോ വിച്ച് ആർ ടോക്കിംഗ് ഓൺലി അബൌട്ട് ഇക്കണോമിക്സ് and you forget all your social media but you twitter the one that is like x ipo x nada i think that is a very very good source yeah as as source le poite don't follow these bollywood actors and all that for all economists for yeah. all economists sociologists all like rethinking economics dot org i follow that i follow that or bahujan economics or other group and our our follow ya feminist economics follow ya I, Twitter, you get a lot of information. Also, K and Raj Economics Club. <laughs> yes, yes, correct. Also, K and Raj Economics Club. Uh, and uh, uh, top economists, top e- economists, yeah. our latest papers are the um, uploaded under. So, you can just okay. download under one of them. So, you get a lot of information. Follow economists if you want to be an economist. Follow other data yeah. sources and also these kind of organizations which are uh yeah. you know or heterodox economics if you see your interest you follow heterodox econometric society is your interest you follow them uh that is yeah. a good uh, social media but instagram nahi banna sano ki it's a big waste of time i think um, but yeah. yeah i think uh, I mean, so two ways reading data and uh, latest information from different types of sources uh that yeah. should be able to get you somewhere yeah i think i think that was uh, uh, adhuru uh, i mean in, in if i'm switching to malayalam this is like a the ro bhayangara fundamental aitulla etum practical aitulla oru way of becoming a successful economist aanu ipo ma'am share cheyidathu um, i mean as a student of economics i, I would I, if, if i would I want to advise an young student i would have said the same things like idu bhayangara important aanu so ma'am in idu korchum kodi adhigarikamayittu parayan pattum because you have already shown with your career that you have reached somewhere and like you can you can say that with authority so you are in authority to uh, you are with authority to say that i mean so uh, yeah and uh, uh, i i i really really enjoyed uh, having this chat with you and i mean um kendraj economics club is immensely proud to host one of the students of kendraj professor okay. kendraj in a uh, platform uh, and thank you so much for spending your time with us and i, I think this uh, this interview got a little longer than it but uh, i think this yeah, is going to be can. really useful for everyone who's um looking forward to know know a bit about kn trash and we would all always try to add maximum things which we mentioned and uh, during the conversation as links in the description so that you can also go to those resources and find those we would request uh, um a professor to share those links with us so that we can also share it with our viewers sure. um thank you so much professor once again to join thank you so us. much and i enjoyed talking to you as well thank you so much see you then thank bye you. bye